What is going on people? Triple M back again with another video. It's a daily dose of football content and today I would like to talk about a few things from yesterday's game. Obviously starting with Jaden Sancho because I think now is the appropriate time to have the uncomfortable conversation about Jaden Sancho that me and many other Manchester United fans have been putting off. I think now is the time. So let's get into it. First of all, I want to start by saying that I believe in Jaden Sancho. I have believed in Jaden Sancho from the moment he came to Old Trafford. But what did I say? Whatever all the videos I've made about Jadon Sancho have all been titled, they've been titled something along the lines of give him time. They've been titled something along the lines of patience. They've been titled something along the lines of he won't hit the ground running. And I still believe that. I think that Jadon Sancho not hitting the ground running was inevitable, but I didn't think it would take this long. I didn't think that his grace period would be this long. And I am starting to worry. I am genuinely starting to worry that the player we thought we were getting from Dortmund is not the player that's at Manchester United. And the reason for that is not his technical ability. It's not his talent. I don't doubt those two things. It's his mentality. It's his lack of confidence. It's his lack of tactical understanding and his hesitation. Sometimes it looks like he genuinely doesn't know what he's meant to be doing. And, and, and to prove what I'm trying to say here, there's some stats that have been going around about Jadon Sancho. And I went to FBRF and I thought to myself, let me actually do a deep dive. In terms of pass completion rate, he's quite high. He ranks in the 90th percentile. It looks good. If you look at Jadon Sancho's pass accuracy of the season, it's actually not that bad. He's not losing the ball that much in the final third. So what's the problem then? If you dive deeper than just the pass accuracy and you look at the type of passes that he's playing versus the type of passes he isn't playing, what you'll notice is his through balls is very low. So he's not playing that many progressive passes. He's not playing that many forward passes in general, right? His balls under pressure are not particularly great. Sancho is not weaving himself out of tight spaces and producing something for the team. Instead, he's weaving himself out of tight spaces and giving the ball to someone else. Someone else. He did this a lot yesterday against Ammonia. There were moments where he could have taken someone on. There were moments where he could have tried to squeeze through the gap and play a through ball or play a cross. But instead, he turned his back and passed it back to someone else and then tried to make a run. Which, by the way, I've got no problems with. If, if you're a winger and you're trying to get into onto the same wavelengths with your teammates and you're trying to create something through interplay and one-twos, that's fine if the other teammates understand that. The problem is our team isn't there yet. We don't play one-touch football, one-touch, you know, pass and move, pass and move football. We're not there yet. So you as a winger need to adapt your game to the situation and that's where the issue is with Jadon Sancho. That's where the issue is. Now, people will talk about coaching. People will talk about that being Eric Ten Hag's problem. Yeah, you could blame Eric Ten Hag to an extent. But Eric Ten Hag, whoever Manchester United's video analyst is, whoever Manchester United's performance analyst is, and whoever Manchester United's attacking coach is, I'm guessing it's Benny McCarthy, those people are only in charge of figuring out the finer details. So when you go to those people in their office, you say, Gaffer, I'm having a bit of a problem, Mr. Coach, Mr. Manager, I'm having a bit of a problem with my game. The only time you're supposed to go in and do that is when you've already mastered the fundamentals. You've already mastered the basics and now you're looking to your manager to say, listen, I've done everything in my power to try fix my game. I can't see what's wrong. So you tell me, you tell me what are other wingers doing in the league that I'm not and what do I need to change about my game? But I don't believe we're at that point yet. Because I see Manchester United players, including Jadon Sancho, not making a simple forward five-yard pass. Not making a simple run at a defender. That's got nothing to do with coaching. That's 100% on you. That's 100% on you as the individual to take the onus and look in the mirror and say, you know what? I need to be better. I need to look at what Anthony's doing on the other wing. I need to try cutting and take a few more shots. I need to be more dynamic in the way that I play. I need to bring more to the table apart from just trying to pass and move. It's so basic. You need more. You need more nuance. You need more dy dynamism. You need more variety to your play. You need to switch it up a little bit. Like how often do you see Jaden Sancho cutting and shoot? How often do you see Jaden Sancho actually try to take someone on and skin them? How often do you see Jaden Sancho do anything apart from just pass it back and try to run into space intelligently? Like there needs to be a little bit more to your game. I've seen Anthony do a variety of different things. I've seen him take shots from range. I've seen him drop deep and get the ball and play one twos. I've seen him actually run and make take a cross. I've seen him play a cross early. I've seen him do so much. I've seen him even calm things down and just pass between him and Delo and keep possession. I've seen him do so much more. Yet with Sancho, it seems to be the same pattern over and over again. And I feel like he's not adapting. Maybe I'm going crazy. Maybe I'm being harsh on Jaden Sancho. But I genuinely believe that the issue here is with him and not necessarily the people around him. I think he's one of those system players. And you know what the problem with system players is? They only thrive in specific systems that cater to their needs. And that's not good. There are three types of players in football. There are system-specific players, there are great players who are able to adapt regardless of the system, and there are bad players. 
Now, system players can look like bad players if they're not in the system that suits their, pl their, their, their play style. And I think that's where Jaden Sancho is at the moment. I don't believe he's a bad player, but he looks like a bad player because the system isn't catered to his needs. A and we're in a weird space where it's like, so should we wait for Eric Ten Hag to get the best out of this kid? Or should we as a fan base demand more? Should we as a fan base say, you know what? It's not about him. It's about the rest of the team. Because I tell you what, we are not building the team that Sancho needs to thrive anytime soon. And that's just a personal opinion of mine. So I don't know how long he's allowed to get away with this bad form. And I like Sancho. I like Sancho. But I, I, ca I can't defend him anymore. I just can't. Let's talk about Bruno Fernandes. Another one. Listen. I, I can't believe this guy is still starting games. He, he Has he even missed a game since he signed for Manchester United? Because I'm struggling to think of a game that Bruno Fernandes has not played in. Like, genuinely speaking, this guy is actually undroppable. There must be something in his contract. There must be something in his contract that says he needs to play X amount of minutes, otherwise the Glazers have to pay a fine. Otherwise the Glazers are not allowed to take dividends this year. Like, it, that's the only logical explanation. Either that or he's blackmailing the manager. Maybe he's got the nudes of Eric Ten Hag's wife. wife. Um, like, I, I, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Anyone with eyes can see that Bruno Fernandes is not in the best of form. Yeah, he's one of our best, uh, most productive players at the moment, but I think that has to do with him playing in the more advanced position. I think you put Ericsson there, he produces the same numbers, if not more. I if not more, right? Or like, I don't think Ericsson could be any worse than Bruno Fernandes playing in the more advanced role. So if you had a midfield three of, of Scott McTominay, Casemiro and Ericsson, or, or, or midfield three of Casemiro, Fred and Ericsson, I think you get the same level of productivity and output as you do with Bruno Fernandes in the midfield is what I'm trying to say. I don't think dropping Bruno Fernandes harms our, our chance creation, harms how we progress the ball up the field. In fact, I think it improves it, even if it's ever so slightly. So I think he needs to be dropped and again if you've been a long time viewer of the channel you know what's up with bruno like I, I i founded the bruno fernandez fan club basically i am the number one member of of the bruno fan club um but you know what i'm also a fan club of manchester united and you know what i care about more than bruno fernandez manchester united so whether you're my favorite player or my least favorite player when i feel like you're in bad form i'm gonna say it and i think bruno fernandez has been terrible anyways moving on moving on let's talk about these two because i've been saying that these two are on borrowed time for what, about three months now? And, and, and they keep scoring. They keep assisting. It's almost like they have their personal vendetta against me. Uh, on a serious note, they've been great. In comparison to everyone else, they've been great. Now, Marcus Rashford, his performances have been questionable, but nobody can deny that the impact he's had in terms of goals and assists is the reason why we are still, we are still a competitive team this season. It's the reason why we're not set in the bottom half of the table. And you could say the same about Martial as well. Now, Martial hasn't played as much as Rashford. In fact, I think Martial only started the game yesterday and hasn't played for Manchester United, apart from the cameo appearance against Manchester City. But the point still stands. We know how valuable Martial's pr uh, performances were in preseason. And we know that even though preseason isn't a true reflection of what's going to happen in the regular season, we all know that in terms of profile of player, at least the vast majority of us can agree that Martial is the best fit for the 10 system up front. Now, yesterday, he was playing behind Cristiano Ronaldo which is interesting. Martial was playing as a 10, and uh, I kind of like it. I'm not going to lie. I kind of like it. I think Martial plays that role very well because he has all the skills to do it. He's got the hold-up. He's got the technical ability. He's got the tactical understanding and the vision and the foresight to see where everybody is in the field. So he's a very intelligent footballer. On top of that, he's great at dribbling. He's great at maneuvering through tight spaces. He's agile. He's quick. What more do you need? His passing's pretty good as well. So technically, perfect for the number 10 role. And on top of that, he has chemistry with everyone in the team. He makes everyone better. So I actually like what I saw yesterday. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I, 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 think there, I think there's a little bit of marinade. I think there's a bit of barbecue sauce that Eric Tanag is cooking in the kitchen, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, no, like, I, I think it's really good. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about that. At the end of the day, my, my opinions about Martial and Rashford is that they still are on borrowed time at Manchester United. And I'm not going to change my opinion based on four or five good games, especially when it comes to Marcus Rashford. And in the case of Martial, he's only played, he's only started one game and came on as a sub. So I'm not going to just change my opinion on the spot about them two. But I am going to be um, objective enough to give credit where credit is due and say that they are going to be very important this season. And we'll see if they can keep this form up. So um, I've got nothing else to say. Uh, it's been your boy Triple M. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And uh, comment if you want to. Peace.